What's up guys, it's Faceless here and today I'm bringing you a Subtlety Rogue guide and or setup video. I've created a new su Subtlety Rogue setup um, that I've been trying out for the past few days that's working out great. Uh, it's very sort of a controversial setup because a lot of rogues will think why are you running this, why are you doing that sort of thing because obviously it's not sort of the normal. It's very different to what a lot of rogues and a lot of people will be using. But I've found it to work really well for my playstyle and the way I play with my partners in arenas and RBGs. So we'll start with talents. As you can see, always you want to be running sub diffuge. It's too good for sub rogues because you want to be getting ambush off whenever you can. As you can see here, nerve strike is pretty much a standard talent for sub rogues. It's, it's great just to keep yourself from that little bit of damage that's going to be coming out from the enemies that are hitting you and to stop the healing if you're just focusing a healer. Uh, combat readiness, I would only suggest to run against double uh, DPS comps that are melee. Uh, it just works great. It's basically like an, having an extra evasion, kind of. Uh, elusiveness, you always want to be running, unless you feel like you, you're not good enough at keeping your feint up or you're using your defensive abilities in which you could just take it out for cheat death. But I would only use cheat death if you feel like you're going to die a lot or if you're just learning rogue. And it's great just so that you don't won't die and you can stay alive and keep learning to play the class. Um, on the fourth tier, you, it's between Burst of Speed and Shadow Step, you never really want to be using Cloak and Dagger. Uh, Shadow Step is what I will use in arenas, so it's say if I get knocked back by a Typhoon or a, a Trap, I can Shadow Step straight back onto them, or if a caster's casting that, something that I want to lock them on, I will have uh, Shadow Step ready and I will Shadow Step kick them, because they won't see it come in. And Burst of Speed I sometimes run, but it's, it's weird because it is, again, it's all preference. You switch it up whenever you want and use what ability you want. And for this setup, I'm using Prey on the Weak because it goes great with your Find Weakness as a sub rogue. The extra 10% damage through the 100% of their armor is just it's, it just adds up to some insane numbers and some insane damage. And as you can see here, this is where it starts to get controversial. Everybody runs marked for death, and you don't see any rogues running anticipation. But I've found with this setup, anticipation works really well. Because you're going to be conserving your energy and conserving your combo points, you don't want to be stuck at 5 combo points because people are going to be critting around you while you're saving your energy and combo points, which is going to be giving you combo points. Whereas if you use Mark for Death, you're going to be getting 5, then you're going to be trying to get rid of them or dump them on anything as soon as possible instead of waiting for the perfect moment to use the right ability at the right time. So you find yourself using sort of the wrong abilities. So say if I've got 5 combo points and my kidney shot's on cooldown and I don't need to eviscerate or anything, because then, like, sort of, we've only just opened. Maybe I'm still wanting to set up with my bleeds and stuff, but I want them extra combo points above five. So if I've got slice and dice up and rupture, all I could really use is either death from above or eviscerate. But I want to be saving them when I've got ten combo points using anticipation, so I can death from above and eviscerate for the extra damage, and they won't see it coming. So with mark for death as well, with getting combo points from the people critting and you critting. Uh, that's from one of your passives. Uh, you kind of say if you just use five combo points, and then you're about to use your mark for death. If someone gets a crit and you use your mark for death straight away, that's only going to give you four, three combo points. So really, it's, it's not worth it in a way as a sub rogue. It's only worth it if you know you're going to be getting the five combo points out of it. Whereas with this setup, I'm using anticipation because it's great for saving energy and combo points. Um, for your last tier, uh, talents, you don't want to be using Shadow Reflection as a sub rogue. It's a good talent, it's great, you can use it to create like uh, to create pressure and stun locks, but the two minute cooldown is just too much for while you're playing sub, it's, uh, it's just far too long a cooldown. Uh, as you can see I'm using Death from above, it's great, the 50% stronger effect on your eviscerate, as well as having the extra uh, percentage increase of your finishing move from your mastery it's just it comes with some insane crits insane numbers and insane damage venom rush is great if you're going to be going around just rupturing everyone just to get that energy increase if you feel like you can't control your energy well enough it's great just to sort of keep your energy pool going and going so that you're not running out of energy and you can constantly be keeping your slice and dice your rupture up and getting abilities out but i'm running death from above because i sort of when i play this setup I'll be making sure that I don't really use any abilities when I'm below 50 energy. I'll always wait till 50 or 55 energy before I use an ability. 
because I'll have slice and dice up, I'll constantly be auto attacking and I'll constantly have poisons on them anyway, so there's pressure coming out from that. So I can wait for the the energy instead of spamming it, and if I ever went below sort of a certain percentage of health I would stop sort of conserving the energy as much and I would stop putting them into faints and into uh, recuperate, using my combo points for recuperates and stuff like that, just to keep myself alive. <coughs> right, so I'm going to go into my gear here and my gear choices. Uh, at the minute I am 726 item level, uh, in combat 7, I think now I'm still 726, sorry. Because when playing combat I still I have the conquest swords, whereas I don't have them for subtlety, I only have the daggers. Uh, but at the moment, I'm um, running two marker bleeding hollow enchants on my weapons, which on the setup on my other rogue, which I've been testing, which is what I'm showing you guys now, uh, I am using a marker bleeding hollow on my main hand and a marker of thunderlord on my off hand. Because the extra 500 mastery from your main hand is great and all, because you get 500, it's basically two pieces of main gear mastery, nearly three. And then, the cr if you have another one, yeah, it's great because you get the finishing move increased damage, but if you go with Mark of Thunderlord, you're going to be basically getting two, three extra pieces of gear worth of crit. So when you're going to be coming down with these Death and Rebuffs and your Eviscerates, you're going to be getting these big numbers, but they're also going to be pretty much guaranteed crits when, they, when everything procs and you're in PvP combat. I suggest running on your neck and your cape, obviously, Mastery, uh, Gift of Mastery. And with your rings, I'm running Mastery again, just because I play combat and Mastery is my high stat. Same for all Specs of Rogue, but I would suggest running, if you feel like you're not critting enough and you feel like you need a bit more crit if you want to see these big crit numbers, um, just put in crit and chance on your rings, but always you want the higher end, higher end chance like your cape and your neck to be Mastery. Before I get into openers and um, how I open on different classes and stuff, I'm going to show you macros I use as a subtlety rogue. Uh, the main one I'm, I have that, that I would suggest you all to have is a premeditation pre slice and dice macro. I'm using a cast sequence for it so that while I'm in stealth I can use premeditation and straight after use slice and dice. And then that will reset after the 10 seconds which will pretty much have it ready for when premeds off cooldown again. Um, it's great because you can use it while in stealth and then you have your slice and dice before you open and it's just great it's because you'll be getting the energy back and you'd have the attack speed. I have a shadow dance macro here. I used to have my trinket in with this so I'd be dealing more damage but I've saved that and took that out for this new setup which I have in my death from above where it will cast my trinket before I death from above or you can switch this out and place it after your death from above and if you press the the ability and then spam the ability as you're coming down from death from above, you can get your trinket to proc as you're about to hit your target. So you get the extra damage from that, and then you have the extra damage from the time throughout after your death from above. If you don't want the extra damage from the work, the stage one of death from above, but I use it before I use death from above just because of how much damage you can get out from the AoE sort of bit of the death and above which is still great. Um, another one I advise everybody to have as a rogue is a fine sap macro. This I will leave in the description, this is a great macro. Basically, any say if I'm in stealth and I'm going around trying to sap someone, normally if I just have a normal sap I'll be tabbing, pressing tab and sap. This basically does that, um, but it has a range on it. So if you're tapping sap over here, see that target dummy's not in range of a sap. If I get in range, to sap someone, it'll just, like if I spam it, it'll target them and it'll sap, it'll target the nearest enemy in the sap range basically, and um, it also if there's someone in stealth and they come out of stealth, like for a tiny little bit, you know, when you're trying to find someone in stealth, uh, it will find them with this macro and it'll sap them as soon as they're in range, so that's just a great macro to have. And the other one I have is the cheap shot rupture macro, this is a cast sequence again, so when I cheap shot, I'll, I'll just show you guys. See, when I cheap shot, Rupture appears on that same cooldown. Now, that same keybind, sorry. It's just so that while I'm in stealth, I still have my Rupture just sort of there. Because out of stealth, I have it on the same one. So it'd be there, as you can see. And by the time I've took, got my Rupture off, I would probably ha need Kidney Shot to be back on my bars anyway. Because I'll cheap shot, I'll Shadow Dance, and I'll spam Ambush it to 10 combo points. And then I'll use my Rupture. And then my, my cheap shot will probably be reset by then. So it's just great just to keep everything sort of on your bars and in the right places so it's more comfortable for you. 
And I also have a, a each stealth macro. As you can see, it's cast Baroon's Bountiful Bloom and cast Stealth. It, this basically allows me to eat in stealth, as you can see here. Just press one keybind, I'll start eating and I'll go stealth. This is great for resets in arenas and stuff like that if you can get out of combat. Because this is a, it's an item drop from a rare in Shadow Moon Valley, but you're, it allows you to eat it in arenas as well. So if you need that reset and you don't have a healer, you can get that sort of you can eat and get that reset out of it, which is great. And it's, it's brought me back from losing arenas to winning arenas a lot of the time.